Hi friends, this is Vema Reddy. Today we are going to discuss about Salesforce platform events. I have prepared a few slides to demonstrate this. Before we go into this slide, I just want to show you. I'm just looking for some kind of online website where I wanted to make some diagram and thing without creating any much of accounts. But that's one of the thing I found is you can create a PPT here on this online.visual.paradigm.com. Okay. So this is where I just created and you can do most of the things what you can do. I'm just going to present. So you have all the options for presenting as same as like Microsoft PPT also. Okay, so today what we are going to do is we are going to see how the Salesforce platform events is being used in a specific use case or like what is the high level usage of this one. Right, so the high level usage of this one is if you want to enable any event based <clears throat> event based uh, 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 design pattern you want to achieve from the Salesforce to Boomi. Uh, for example, you, you take a one of the case, uh, there is something gets case gets created in a Salesforce. Okay, when case gets created in a Salesforce, so probably you might want to trigger your process. It means basically an event happen. Event is happen. What was the event? A case is being created. For example, now you have some, you know, uh, let's say you have a Bumi, uh, some production issue occurred. Okay, now you want to call to one of the Bumi team. So what they will do, they'll go ahead and uh, uh, maybe this might, use case might be different. They might not be using that, but when you case a create for internal tracking purpose, they will submit a case or you call any of the customer care regarding any of the product. So when they create a case and then it will track that request based on the case until it closure. So when that kind of some something similar kind of event happen and you want to trigger a Boomi, what you can do is you can create the Boomi has a come up with a, a, a Salesforce platform event connector. It was already there since long time. And Salesforce also has a, for the platform level, they created a platform event. Salesforce also has created a platform event. This platform events used internally within the Salesforce platform are also for integrating external applications also, we can use this. So what are we going to do here is, I'm going to create a new case event over here. Okay, we'll show you the, uh, first we'll show you quickly high level steps and then uh, demo, and then we'll go into the detail one where we create what we going to do. Okay, so first thing is, this is a high level flow. I'm going to create one of the case event. Okay, I'm going to create one of the case event. So I just went to platform events. I created a case and one of the field I added as a case ID. So probably if you want to, because you want to make it uh, more like lightweight, the event information, we, we just go and give the only key information, the key fields based on that information, whatever case details, whatever you want additional details, you can go ahead and uh, pull with a, another uh, connector or somewhere. Or else you can make, this event itself have all the required details because making the event have all the required details, it will be like huge. Uh, but uh, general general cases like only trigger the key key fields because sometimes depends there might be case you might need to pull uh, two to three objects depends on your use case to send the data to target system so they cannot accommodate all the that data in the event. So only thing is you can uh, populate of mandatory fields in the case, uh, yeah, in the event. And then with that information, once the process gets triggered, we have an ability to go ahead and pull all other uh, relevant details based on the key fields. For example, now you have a case, okay? Once a case ID gets available to you, so you can have able to pull all the case details using the Salesforce connectors. So that's what I mean to say here. Okay, now once case is gets created, what do you want to do? You need to tell Salesforce that, okay, once the case gets created, it means Salesforce will internally create a kind of an alert. So that alert, you want to catch it because we don't have an option to, we don't have an option to catch that event. 
because Salesforce internally platform level that even happened. So for that, what we are going to do is Salesforce has uh, create a uh, flow options also there. Flow options also there. It means similar kind of integration, I can say. Instead of writing a code, they come up with this kind of drag and drop. What we can do is you can create one flow. It means you can tell when this flow you want to trigger. There are different ways are available here. One of the thing was you're using is record triggered flow. So there you can select on which record you want to trigger this flow. For example, now I selected this as a case. And when cases gets created or updated, I want to trigger this flow. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to create one event. What is that event is called case event. With that case event, I am going to create with this step. As soon as the case is gets created from the Salesforce UI, this on behind skin, it will get triggered that captures that record event. And then it creates one event called case event, the custom event that we, what we created over here with this case ID. So when this case is gets created, what happens is we are created a Boomi process. This Boomi process is basically using the start shape as a Salesforce platform event. And it is by default, it will be a listen option. So we'll be listening that. And I already imported a case event over here. You can see there is a case event over here. And in this case event, you will be able to get all the required information. So you can see I have edited one of the existing case. You can see I have created one of the existing case. So whenever you create any kind of an event, so platform internally creates one thing called API name. You can see I created a case name as case event, but you can see API name is case event underscore E because E is nothing but it's an uh, event and it's a custom custom event. Okay. It's an event. Okay. Because for standard event, you don't see anything. It's e double IPN, double IPN, E is one event. So this is the API name. So Salesforce internally uses this API name, not, not this plural name or not this object name. Okay. But this object name is only used for labeling purpose. But this is the API name is, is what going to use internally. But these are the standard fields. These are the standard fields that is going to be created for every field. What additional fields you want to create using this new button, you can create all the fields what you want to create. So you can see created by, created date, and even UUID, and then reply ID, all this information. So once this event is gets submitted, once you have either you create or modify anything, what happens you just save it as soon as you save it you can see there is a received event on channel it means there is a internally salesforce creates a channel with that channel it takes that event okay you can see slash event slash case event c so once this this thing is there it automatically because the flow the flow that we created over here in with this will be created within salesforce only so I'm going to show you like how you are going to do all these things. As soon as you create a sales event gets triggered, this will be triggered. And this is going to be create one of the object called this Salesforce event. This is the event is getting triggered. You might be seeing this one is because I have the sub background flow might have been triggered. And you can see as soon as you triggered and deploy this Boomi process into an app, uh, atom or molecule or whatever it is, then it will going to receive that event. Okay. Receive that event. And you can see this is how that schema of the payload is looks like. You can see the schema up here. You can see schema means with every, every, because this custom event is also a kind of an object, even though it's an event object, but it's kind of object. So in Salesforce in every object, there will be a structure would be defined, will be created. That structure would be identified with this internal ID. And you can see the created by ID who created this event, created date and case ID underscore underscore C. And if you see created by ID, created date, all these are standard fields over here. Created by, created date, right? maybe the, the actual field name is created by ID because it says created by label 
but actual technical name what could be created by id and created because i did not set any of these values the platform is internally setting i only set the value for this case id you can see the case id is being created the case id has been mapped here and this replay and you can see channel this channel is where salesforce internally uses this one to receive to publish because it is kind of equally into Bumi event uh, atom queue connector where you can do publish one event and take another another application to take event in case of Bumi um, atom queue connector publisher and subscriber both are producer or consumer both should be within Bumi only but in case of Salesforce we we are a consumer part now we received that event we received that event whereas uh, Salesforce also can receive this event as part of this record flow, you can also select one of the event and maybe if on creation of some event, you want to do some event notification from the Salesforce end, still you can do that. You don't need only just triggering email notifications. We don't need to create any Boomi process. We don't want to go ahead and use trigger, but there is this common email service that has been using for all other scenarios. Probably you might come up with Boomi services. Okay. So now this is where, how it looks like, but now I want to show you, there is one more thing called in Salesforce, in Salesforce, I'll show you this one, but uh, there is a called stream monitor. Okay. There is a, there is a app called stream monitor. I think the way how you have is Salesforce has created some kind of events or not even, sorry, it's kind of applications or plugins or apps or whatever I can call. You can install that thing with that installation you will be able to see the traffic ongoing you will be able to see the traffic ongoing traffic so what i did is i went to subscribe here i selected my custom event here custom platform event and when they select a custom platform event like i triggered this one because they have two events are there and you can just click on subscribe and you can see under subscriptions we have one subscription is there Okay, once you click on this monitor, you can see this has been three events it has been showing. So you can able to see whether it is really triggered from Boomi, Pro, whether Bo in case if Boomi was received that event or not, that if you want to debug in that case, what you can do is at least you can see whether the event has been published or not. Once event published, it is consumer part to receive it. It's consumer part to receive it. You can see you can see when it was triggered what is the channel and what is this and replay id and you can see all this information when you click on payload you'll be able to see all metadata about this one so this information you already saw from the boomi boomi one when created created by id created date case id channel and type and then reply id so how do you install this one is you just need to go to app exchange whenever you go to here maybe app exchange something maybe you can go to some settings or somewhere and then you can go to setup probably you can go to app exchange you'll be able to set up all these things for example You can see app exchange marketplace so once you go to app exchange marketplace it navigates to a different website and you have to create a trial budget account over here you have to log in and you can just select stream monitor okay there is also a thing called i think i never tried this one platform event simulator instead of you create an a case and then trigger automatically create an event with the flow Probably you want to trigger an event without creating any object. You want to simulate that event. Probably you can do that. I think this option. Now you can see, I just click on free. It's a free one. You just click on to get it now. And then it asks you to, because it's already created an account with my name, because it first time it asks you to account. 
and then it asks you to log in to the Salesforce. Once it's Salesforce, because this app where really you want to install, this app want to install it to my Salesforce. So my Salesforce instance, this one. So there it asks you to log in with the Salesforce. Once you go to Salesforce credential, it asks you to confirmation install. It takes few seconds to install. And then once installation is succeeded, then you will be able to see this one. If you want to go back to that, just click on service. Just search for stream alt. In case if it is not visible, just search it stream monitor. Okay, when you click on stream monitor, it opens here this one and you will be able to see what all things you have because it's already moved here and it's going subscriptions are zero. No subscriptions are there, but you want, we can just already show you how you can do subscription over here. Just select platform event or whatever type because I'm, in my case, I just want to receive a platform event only and then I'm just clicking. You can see this event has been subscribed. So whatever ongoing things you do, it will going to trigger these things. For example, I already have a case over here. Okay, so I just created a while ago, this event. I'm going to make some changes into this one. Click on edit. I'm just going to search for type. I'll update the type as uh, other. Okay, I'll just name it as other. Case reason, I can say, maybe I can just put it as a feedback and just click on save. You can see case number is updated. You can see it's published an event by the flow and it will be received it. You can see this event ID is this one. So if you go to Boomi and you don't need to go to Boomi to see because Boomi might have already received, but if you go to the Streaming monitor. Why I didn't subscribe it? Oops. So I didn't subscribe it. I think probably to see that event. Okay, let's try past event. We'll be able to. No, I don't want to publish it. Sorry. Oh, you think even we have an option to publish also because we need to put that payload and publish it. Subscribe to channel. I think after subscribe only it will show because in the existing earlier one i have closed it that's why it is just uh, not showing but let's see whether the event is being received from boomi and or not i'll just refresh you can see this one this was just triggered 11 o'clock just a minute a minute ago Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. In the next video, I'm going to show you uh, step by step how did I set up all these uh, objects. I'm going to explain all these things in the next video. Thank you.